The idea that I want to talk about, I think, may make some of you a bit uncomfortable. So I want to say that up front. It's, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but I want to bring it out and discuss it uh, in the open because I think we have to embrace this concept to scale healthcare without raising costs. And it's a concept that I call emotional automation. And I want to explain what I mean by that. So what do I mean by emotional automation? Well, how many people recognize one of these, right? These are from my generation, pet rocks. Who had a pet rock, right? OK, so we bonded with these things. We, it, was, it was a generational thing. Now, my kids, on the other hand, had these, Tamagotchis. People recognize these? little devices that they had to pet and feed and pay attention to, or literally the thing died. So really interesting use of a little technology, and they were uh, incredibly popular when my kids were growing up. And of course, nowadays, people are s sleeping with their smartphones uh, because they can't give those up and talking to their nav systems. And it's very clear that we easily anthropomorphize. We're comfortable with that. We are quite comfortable giving inanimate objects human characteristics. So why is it, though, that when it comes to healthcare providers talking about visits with patients, we go back to the notion that we have to meet someone in a room in a face-to-face -face environment to provide care? I think it has to do with this notion that people assume that Enable to, in order to form a trusting relationship, two people have to be involved in a human-to-human -human interaction and preferably a face-to-face -face interaction. And that's the assumption that I want to really reflect on with you because I think there are plenty of good data to support that that's not true, that we can develop relationships with technology that are trusting. And I would even say that we must move into that territory in order to leverage the population of providers we have across the demand for services that's coming our way. So let me just say a word or two about that. And that is, we know that there's a supply and demand problem in healthcare. Let's just look at it quickly. 24 million people with diabetes, but more importantly, 8% growth per year. There was a headline in this morning's uh, US uh, Aid a Day about the doubling of the diabetes rate and the uh, number in 2050, it's scary. One in three people over 20 with hypertension and one in 10 over 65 with heart failure. So we know these numbers, we talk about them, but then if we look at the supply side, it's even more jarring. Here, what you see is the orange line, which reflects on the demand for services over time and the yellow line, the supply. And I've driven, I put a white line in where we are now, we're already losing the battle. And if you look at out towards, again, 2050, the gap is just extraordinary. So I don't think we can continue to do it the way we do it. It doesn't add up. If we time face-to-face -face in a room with someone, it's not going to work. Now, again, people are uncomfortable with that because they think, well, I've, I've got to see the doctor. And the doctors, we really, really, really think we have to see the patients. So what are we going to do about that? I think it has to do with this idea of trust. Can we form trusting relationships with technologies? So let me just share a couple of data points from work we've done and others. This is my, one of my favorite things that we've done at the center over the years. This is Karen, the virtual coach, who is a computerized avatar. She looks like a cartoon and she talks like a computer. But when people who were in a walking program met with her three times a week, they did about three times better adhering to their step count goals than people who didn't. And those data are shown here. So the top line are people who had access to three meetings a week with Karen, the virtual coach, and the bottom line are controls. And you can see the divergence comes up pretty quick, and it's pretty striking. So I would argue in this case that the people in that top group indeed formed a relationship with Karen that led to a behavior change that improved their health. We've seen similar kinds of things in work we've done in Second Life. And of course, earlier in the conference, we had a visit from Corey Kidd and Autumn, the health coach. And this has, of course, extended into robotics now. So I think it's undoubtedly, there are many, many examples that are like the Pet Rock or the Tamagotchi that apply to health. 
but somehow when we talk about the Tamagotchi and the pet rock, we get warm and fuzzy and laugh. But when we talk about Autumn the robot or Karen the virtual coach, we get nervous. So let me just share one more sort of penetrating example with you. This is from Tim Bickmore at Northeastern. He's the person who designed Karen for us. This is another relational agent that Tim designed. And the example here was discharge planning. So this relational agent is wheeled into the room for people before they get discharged from the hospital. And uniformly, the patients are telling Tim and his team they prefer the relationship with a virtual agent. Because why? It doesn't talk down to me, or she doesn't talk down to me. She lets me repeat my questions, and she's not in a hurry. This is sobering, I think, for those of us who insist that we have to have face-to-face -face relationships with patients to make something happen. Now, is it because we think we're going into a page from Orwell's 1984, or perhaps we're going into the brave new world of Huxley, or even that we're going to be confronted with Hal from 2001? This is silly. Why, why must we think this way? Uh, when it's very clear that we enjoy working with pet rocks, but somehow when it comes to healthcare, we're afraid of how. Now, it doesn't help that you read in the newspaper every day that uh, there's a new thing about Facebook that's dangerous and they're selling your data and so forth. There's this constant fear of technology that's out there that's, that's going to make us uncomfortable about this, but I think we need to embrace it. So I want to talk about this with all of you. Technology is building relationships that are sustaining and trusting. We've been doing it with various things for decades, probably before the pet rock. And we need to talk about how we can integrate this into healthcare in order for us to sustain healthcare delivery while the demand goes through the roof. So my request to you and my call to action is to get involved in this conversation. We need to use this kind of technology not to replace people, but to extend people across larger numbers of patients. And we need to figure out how to do it in a way that providers will embrace it. And we haven't yet done that, in my opinion. And I hope to have a dialogue with you about that. Thanks.